Welcome, everyone, to the world of insulator collecting. Insulators were once used on old telegraph, telephone, and power lines, along with old radios and other electrical applications. They became very popular during the 1960s when a lot of the old pole lines started coming down. The old linemen and different people really got into collecting them back then. And you can still go out and find insulators just about anywhere along old railroad lines, old power lines and old roads, behind old buildings and old houses, old farms, different places. Insulators are a lot of fun to collect because they come in so many different styles Thousands of different varieties were made and all different colors and glass and porcelain also plastic and wood But the glass and the porcelain are the most popular with collectors because they come in so many different colors and styles as you can see here Some of the glass insulators were made in certain colors to warn the linemen of certain lines having higher voltages than others during the early years, some linemen were electrocuted by touching the wrong lines when many different lines were used on the same poles. Also, the glass companies used recycled glass and cullet, and some insulators were made in different colors unintentionally. So there's a vast array of beautiful colors you can find in the glass insulators. The most common colors you find insulators are either aqua or clear, but lots of beautiful colors can be found if you look hard enough. Look at all the beautiful glass jewels that were used on top of the poles at one time. Some insulators have a lot of history attached to them. It's too bad that they can't tell their stories. Imagine all the different conversations that pass through the telegraph and telephone wires. Imagine what the insulator saw on top of the poles, some sat up on the poles for over a hundred years and witnessed many changes. Here we have a variety of porcelain insulators I have in my collection. As you can see, all different styles were made in different colors and were made and used all over the world. Insulator collecting is a lot of fun because it's nearly endless the different directions you can go as to what to collect. Some people like to collect the different shapes while some people like to collect all the different colors. Some people collect the more historically significant insulators like some that were used along the Transcontinental Railroad, or during the Civil War, or the early days of power, or communication lines. Some insulators were used in the Old West. You can find insulators in just about every place if you look hard enough along old roads and railroad lines, old buildings. You can find insulators on the internet or at flea markets, antique stores.
some websites to find insulators are insulators.info and you can search in the picture poster gallery. My friend Ray Klingensmith has Pole Top Discoveries and that's at poletop.com. You can check out Bill and Jill insulators.com and Eagle Cap Collectibles.com and also the insulator store.com. You can find all kinds of insulators on eBay and Etsy. Here we have a large variety of radio antenna insulators and lightning arresters for radios. Radios were really popular in the 1920s and 30s and 40s. Everybody had a radio, so a large variety of insulators were made for the radio antennas and the lightning arresters kept the radios from being damaged during lightning storms. As you can see, there's all different styles and types of those that were made. Also here are knobs and tubes and different insulators for exposed wiring. When they first putting electric wires in houses, they just ran the wires along the walls and ceilings in the crawl spaces and attics. In the back here, we have different high voltage style insulators. Here's two popular lily shell porcelain insulators from the early 1900s made by New Lexington. And in the back, we have a large glass high voltage insulator made by Him and Gray Glass Company. It's a lot of fun to go out insulator hunting. It's like a treasure hunt looking for beautiful glass and porcelain jewels. I collect both the glass and porcelain for all the beauty that they have and the history attached to them. Here's some spool and type insulators. Here's a early high voltage porcelain insulator made by the R. Thomas and Sons Company, patented March 8th, 1898, with a beautiful glaze on it. Next, we have a beautiful blue cook Johnny Ball strain insulator that was used in Jacksonville, Florida. Here we have a glass insulator used on a power line that was built in 1895, found in South Carolina. Here's a ever popular Mickey Mouse style in porcelain. The Mickey Mouse style is the most popular style collected by insulator collectors. Here's a Harlow Claw style insulator. Note the fingers on top were used to hold the line wire in place. It's a really cool style made in both porcelain and glass from the early 1900s. Here's a beautiful blue-gray porcelain insulator made for street lights during the 19-teens. It comes in brown also. The blue-gray is rare with probably less than 12 known. Here's an early Fred Lock insulator. Note the handprint that was left behind in the glaze on the skirt. The person who made the insulator is long gone, but they left their handprint behind. 
And if you look inside, there's even a thumbprint. Pretty cool. Next we have a red glazed insulator from the United Kingdom that was used along railway lines there. Here's some different varieties of insulators. And me and my friend insulator hunting. I've always loved the history attached to the insulators and the fun and thrill of going out and looking for them. There's so many different types to go look for and to collect. Here's a bunch of purple insulators I got one time. If you're interested in collecting insulators, please contact me and I can tell you all about them. And keep watching my videos in the future for more insulator videos and antique hunting and everything else I enjoy doing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.